My name is Arun Gupta. I work in the open source team at Amazon. Open source is hot, and as of this morning, literally on fire. I'm glad we are sitting in the hall. <laughs> um, Amazon has been contributing, committing, collaborating in the open source for many years, and today I'm here to tell you about why Amazon cares about open source. At Amazon, we are customer obsessed. You know, 90 to 95% of our roadmap is driven by customers. We don't look at a technology that this is a cool technology and let's build a service around it. Um, we, customers tell us what are the services that matter to them, and they want to run at scale. And that's the kind of reason we look at and take a service and take an open source project and build a service around it. Our customers love open source, and they want us to help them innovate on top of them. That is what drives our contribution to open source. At times, we contribute to projects like Linux and Kubernetes that is already existing because our customers want us to help them. At other times, we contribute our own projects, things like Apache MXNet or Firecracker, as Kelsey was talking about. And then at other times, we are also looking at projects that are created by the customers, something like Netflix Spinnaker, and adding our own integrations to those projects. At all of these venues, essentially, we are helping customers to be more innovative and do the heavy lifting for them. Now, a healthy community is super important, and we invest in multiple ways, which I'll talk about in a second, on how to make sure that those communities stay healthy and how we are investing in those. Um, it's also important uh, for us to make sure that we get a lot of eyeballs, which is a typical benefit of an open source community. So we have released software like S2N, which is our Apache licensed um, TLS implementation, and we got a lot more eyeballs and a much better quality on top of that. And last but not the least, a lot of open source contributions from Amazon come from the fact that maintaining an internal fork or a branch you know, leads to a technical debt and is a maintenance nightmare. So we want to make sure there is an upstream compatibility over there. These are some of the example projects that we contribute to. Let me talk about a couple that you know, we care about. So first is, say, OpenJDK. In 2016, we realized we cannot rely upon a binary distribution of Java. We, we are a huge Java shop, and as we were building, we started checking out the OpenJDK source code and building our own binary and giving that to all of our services. We got thousands of microservices running on top of OpenJDK. Now, as we were running it, we realized you know, there are operational fixes, there are performance improvements that we can do, and we can do releases a lot more frequently for our team. Now, we did that for a couple of years, and then we treat our internal and external customers about the same. So, Again, coming from a customer obsession angle, customers tell us that, hey, we need something which is a no-cost, long-term supported binary. So we were contributing these all to upstream. One of the core tenets of Amazon Coretto, which we launched last year, is upstream compatibility. Same reasons. We don't want to maintain a fork. We want to make sure there are no maintenance nightmares over the long period of time. So we continue collaborating and putting all our fixes in OpenJDK. So it was a fairly straightforward. Amazon Coretto is now a no-cost, long-term supported distribution of OpenJDK. Another project that I want to talk about is Kubernetes and etcd. Now, according to the latest CNCF survey, 50% of Kubernetes, more than 50% actually, runs on top of AWS. Customers tell us it's not easy to run Kubernetes or manage the cluster, or at least for them, it's undifferentiated heavy lifting. That's exactly where we said, OK, we're going to create Amazon EKS. And this is a fully managed control plane. And now you can bring your Kubernetes workloads very easily on AWS. Let's talk about the ways which we interact in the community and we invest in them. We are part of the Linux Foundation. Over two years ago, we joined, um, just about two years ago, actually, we joined a Cloud Native Computing Foundation as a Platinum member. Again, customers tell us, because that's where all the interesting discussions are happening, so be there and listen to us. We upped our level of Apache Foundation. So all of these foundations are the venues where our customers want us to be present. This is the third year in a row that we are a top tier sponsor for OSCON, so very excited about that. And then we are also looking at other conferences which are open source related, where we could be present and talk to our customers, yet another venue where we can talk to them. We also created opensource.amazon.com, which is a one source landing page where you can learn everything around open source. We also have an open source blog. 
And the thing that I'm most excited about over there is how more than 20% of contributions to that blog are coming from customers like you or developers like you. So if you are building anything open source and cool on AWS, I would love to see your contributions over there. You want to talk to us? We, of course, have a social media handle, so AWS Open. So here are the main references for you. You want to learn about what is Amazon doing in open source? Go to opensource.amazon.com. You want to talk to us? Talk to us at AWS Open. Follow that handle. And you want to write a document or an article or something cool that you're doing with open source? Let me know. And my Twitter handle is on my back. And take a look at that. Thank you. <laughs>